Welcome back to a brand new day in the studio. Today, I, I thought I would try something a little bit different with my camera angles. So we're gonna have a few uh, extra camera angles to uh, look at the painting with. So for today, we're gonna be working on the hand. And the hand is definitely one of the uh, most difficult uh, parts of the painting for me. It's the part where I've had the most trouble. So I've read in some of your comments that I need to, I need to uh, adjust the width of the fingers again a little bit, and I need to pay attention to the shape of the knuckles. So there's going to be some drawing things that I'm going to want to take a look at uh, before getting too far into the color. So uh, what we're going to do is get a little brush. So I'm going to be using. Let's see here, a little tiny, let's say this little one. So I'm going to dilute it with a little bit of my brush cleaner. So I'm just going to try to just use a little bit of burnt umber and thin it out, perhaps maybe a little bit more. So what I'm using as a medium today uh, in this little cup here is Liquin, Liquin Original. Uh, I actually ran out of my medium, my preferred medium, Neo McGill, uh, but I had some Liquin lying around, so that should work just fine. So let's use a little bit of burnt umber to make some of these little drawing corrections. So let's see. I think that this knuckle here this whole knuckle here needs to curve, uh, whereas I have it a little too straight. These knuckles are actually going to come out a little bit. So there's going to be a little point here, another point over there. Almost makes me think like brass knuckles. So I just want to move those out. We're probably going to have to take a look at, let's see, this little distance here. So I also read in some of the comments that um, I'm going to have to look it up on my laptop later. Uh, but this little shape here that was causing me trouble with the model's hand, I could reevaluate the fingers. Tell you what, so I'm trying to make videos that represent basically the day to day, the real life aspect of being in an artist studio. Now, it's, it's not always the case that things work out perfectly and then that's going to be the point where I make uh, how to fix my mistakes videos. And then once I try to fix that mistake, if it's still a mistake, then we're gonna call it struggling. So this time, this is going to be a little bit different. So this is going to be Yupari struggling with the hand video. But again, I'm really trying to give you the full experience of what it's like. I love Bob Ross's videos. Uh, but again, we have very different uh, philosophies. The Bob Ross philosophy is we don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. Well, my philosophy is we do make mistakes and learning how to correct them is what really pushes us forward. So for me, correcting the hand is going to be it's going to be really a, a very difficult thing to do, at least today. So in today's video, it's really it's a little bit less of a, a typical tutorial or something like that. It's going to be a little more about the struggle, <laughs> the real life struggle here. Come on, I'm sure you can relate to this. All right, so let's make the fingers a little bit thinner. I also noticed that this shape here is a little bit off. This needs to come out a little further than I had. I don't know. Today I think is a little more about 
you seeing how I actually struggle with something. Now it's not always the best of days when you struggle with something, but there's always something to learn from it. There's there's always something I don't know, there's always something there in the struggle where we where we take in the fact that we can't get something right away and just kind of build towards I don't know, building our patience, I guess. So I moved that shape up. I moved the knuckles outwards a little bit, which would also kind of uh, elongate this shape. And again, I had this still too compressed. So again, today's video is all about <laughs> how I struggle with drawing. So we're going to move this out a little bit further. But at the same time, I'm also kind of giving you another way to correct your painting. And that is the little tiny water brush. Little tiny water brush and a little bit of brush cleaner or paint thinner. So the thinner I'm using is, uh, I think it's called, uh, I keep forgetting what it's called, Citrus Essence Brush Cleaner. It's supposed to be a less toxic type of brush cleaner. The only reason I use it is just because it it kind of tends to dry a little bit faster. That's really the only reason I use it. So we're going to push the wrist a little bit further out that way. Whereas it used to be here, now we're pushing that shape there. And these videos are, are more about inviting you into my studio, inviting you into this studio every single day, really trying to create an experience for you. All right, so another thing I noticed is we're going to have to take a look at this width. So I think I have the distance from here to here a little bit too long in comparison to the distance from here to here. So that is going to have to change. So I'm going to actually push this line a little further out there. A little bit further. But I think the biggest thing really is this area, trying to get this area worked out. You know, I thought about just filming it, just me creating these outlines and then voicing it over. If you recall, my older videos were voiceover style. You know, because I don't always have the answers. Like, I, I don't always know how to fix something. And I read the comments and I try to figure out, I mean, I, I'm really thankful for all of your suggestions and how to fix this um, but to be honest I'm just kind of trying to push this shape out for the knuckles like our knuckles if you notice here my knuckles aren't really flat these two come out a little bit further these two points but anyway so the reason I'm not making this voiceover style is because I'm just trying to show you what it's like to really struggle with something, but also learn from it. All right, so I think those are going to be the adjustments that I'm going to make to the linear structure. So I'm going to go ahead and read out the uh, color palette that I'll be using today. So we have flake, sorry, titanium white, flake white, burnt umber, Alizarin Permanent, Cadmium Red Medium, Yellow Ochre, Sap Green, Ultramarine Blue, and Ivory Black. And if you're new to this channel and you want to know exactly what materials I'm using, you can always go ahead and scroll down to the description box below, and all of that information will be typed up for you. So what I'm going to do now is get a larger brush, a size 4 filbert brush. 
and I'm going to mix up a little value scale of basic flesh tone, just like I did with the portrait. So let's start off with titanium white, yellow ochre, cadmium red, So this is going to be kind of our lightest light. So we're going to apply the first color pass to the hand. Now the first color pass, the emphasis of the first color pass is really just trying to further develop the drawing and the values while introducing subtle color, just very basic color. We don't want anything too difficult just yet with our colors. Now in the middle tone region, I'm going to use flake white. I like to use flake white in the middle tones because uh, I can use more of it without raising the value too much. It also helps to create a thicker body to the paint. Another nice thing about flake white is that it dries faster. So sap green, ultramarine blue, alizarin permanent. Now we're going to get some darker shades of flesh tone. And I'm really trying to get the average color of what I'm observing in front of me. Now, like we did in the color study, we discovered that the uh, local color or the average color within the hand it's actually very similar to the colors for the face. I'm no surprise there, right? But the value scheme is going to be a little bit darker on average than the face. So it's a good thing we did that color study and the value study. So if you missed the color study or the value study for this painting, that is also in my YouTube channel. So you can always go ahead and look at those videos. I think the color study was last week or something like that. All right, so now we have a very general uh, value scale of basic flesh tone. Now I'm going to take, let's see, this is a a little size 2 round brush. The brush actually says 4, Master's Touch 4. Um, but in any case, it's your typical size 1 filbert. So I'm going to start off in this area here uh, that I need to actually push outwards a little bit. So the idea is not to try to nail the color, not to try to get the perfect color. The idea is to further develop the drawing with this new material that we have to draw from, which is color. So what happens is when we, when we superimpose color on top of a monochromatic underpainting, something kind of happens where you're starting to notice it there where we can see with a little bit more clarity where something needs to go or where something has gone wrong. Just because we have that extra bit of information in front of us, which is color. Now you can always make color much more complex and much closer to what you're actually observing in the later stages. Let's make it a little bit warmer. So we are going to change up the, uh, the hue in certain areas such as the knuckles. The knuckles are going to be on average a little bit warmer. So just a little bit of alizarin permanent in this area of the palette. So let's go to the next troublesome area of the hand. And it's going to be this knuckle. So with a darker, warmer tone, we're pushing this knuckle down a little bit. So it's going to be a little darker here, and I'm trying to push it down. A little bit of cadmium red medium. A 
So we're really trying to push this knuckle down. Now let's just go ahead and put in a color for the rest of the finger. Very, very thin, very, very simple. Now, of course, this value here is going to get a little darker. Darker because the plane is facing away from the light. So the plane is closer to parallel than perpendicular. And that's why it's getting darker over here. Now let's move on to the next knuckle that's giving us trouble. I'm almost tempted to call this knuckle a knucklehead just because it makes me struggle so much, but you know. I'm going to try to keep a, a serious demeanor about this. So I'm moving this knuckle down with this one patch of value. And again, it's going to get darker right around here because this area is facing the light a little bit less. Now I'll tell you what, let's go to the other knuckle while we're working on the knuckles. Place this dark value right over here, just so we have that kind of arc between the knuckles. A little bit darker over here, yet again. All right, so let's go ahead and spread a tone now of color for these fingers. Very, very thin. And again, these colors are going to be modified later on in later stages. But the most important thing is to try to address right now these knuckles. A little bit of cadmium red medium, flake white, yeah, I guess some titanium white. And I heard and I read that I had some of the flesh tones a little too pink on the portrait. So yeah, sorry about that. But in the next color pass, now I know which color to uh, push away from. So I'll push away from the pink, closer to the orangey tone. All right, so now we're gonna make this actually a little bit redder and pinker. Sorry, but I see some more pink over here. And we're also going to use this color to push this area, to push that out a little bit. That also helps to kind of elongate the, what is this called again? Metacarpals, metacarpals. All right, so a little darker, a little pinker, right around here. Let's make it even darker. Now we're starting to put in this form that we discovered with the color, oh, sorry, with the value. So now with the color, starting to put in this little plane change. Now these flesh tones on average are a little bit darker than the ones uh, that we mixed up for the face. But, I'll tell you what, it's also a little bit easier in the second layer of color to make things a little bit darker with a glaze. So, it's okay if it gets a little bit lighter than need be. Because we can always go back and glaze. So a little bit lighter over here, so let's go to this lighter region. So this whole area here now is going to be lighter, just like we had in the underpainting. 
very, very thin. And it's important to sit back or stand back, preferably stand back, just to make sure that you're getting a little bit of perspective on your painting or drawing. Now we're going to put a flat color right here. And it's going to get a little darker and a little more red right around here as these planes start to turn away from the light. A little bit of sap green. So sap green and alizarin permanent are two colors that were made for each other. I love to mix them together. So a little bit darker over here. A little bit of a lighter plane right here. And what I'm trying to do is get these planes for the metac metacarpals. So for instance, what I'm trying to do is differentiate this plane here. All right, so let me get another brush here. Add a little bit of my brush cleaner. A little bit of Liquin, Liquin Original. Now we're gonna go and put in some of the dark tones for the shadow. So with a combination of just Burnt Umber, Ivory Black. Think of Ivory Black as kind of like a, a very neutral blue, very dark blue, a little bit of sap green, just to kind of raise the value a little bit, just so it's not too dark. Now let's go ahead and follow along this shape here. Try to elongate the fingers just a little bit. You know, I have a feeling that the hand is probably going to take a few more sittings than the face. Just because I'm not as good with hands. <laughs> I don't paint hands uh, as often as I do uh, faces. I just don't have the experience with it. And I'm just, I'm being real with you. If I'm going to invite you into my studio every single day, I better darn be honest with you. So you're really watching the you're really watching and, and listening to the truth. Not trying to hide anything from you. And I'm just too darn stubborn really to take the photograph and trace it onto the painting. I just, I don't want to do that. I'm sorry. So sorry. For those of you that want me to paint a perfect photographic image. And you know what? I don't like to paint perfect photographic renditions of anything. I really like to uh, take the information that I'm looking at take the visual information, interpret it, and create a painting, or create a drawing. So I'm going to go ahead and um, try to soften the edge between these two shapes. I'm, I have a different brush for that. So let's first mix up somewhat of the value that we want and just go in very lightly. Just kind of blend 
without losing the distinction between the edges. Now, this is the point where I really don't want to render any more than this. Now I have all the information that all the information that I need to make something look like it's at least somewhat existing in space. So now it's going to be time to get all of this information and try to get it to work in relations. So try to get all these shapes to work in relation to one another. So I just adjusted that edge yet again. I really want to make this shape a little bit longer than I had before because I had this a little bit too wide. And you know, I'm really going to try and talk to you about <laughs> I'm going to try and talk to you about the real struggles involved in painting. And uh, this is something I've been wanting to do for a long time. Uh, because I know some of you have been watching me and um, trying to learn from my videos. And, and thank you so much for watching those videos, the tutorials. Remember back when I used to do one video a week and it really seemed like I had all the answers. Um, but you really didn't get a sense of the challenges that I had to go through. You know, sometimes I would film an entire painting video, go to the editor, and it's like Thursday, right? And I need to upload the video. I needed to upload the video by like Saturday. I filmed the video like Monday through Wednesday, and it's just awful, awful. And then I was really in trouble. Uh, and all of that was just because I was trying to put the best image of the painting out there. You know, but now I'm not really as afraid to show you the, the, the reality. You know, what it's really like to struggle. And you don't have to hate it. You know, it's, it's part of the process. Think about a physicist sitting on their office table or writing blocks of equations everywhere, getting nowhere sometimes. But it's kind of the pursuit of trying to get that one equation that fits in the entire universe, describes the entire universe. It's really the, the pursuit that's a lot of fun and it's a lot of struggle too. Going to add a little bit more of a pinkish tone here. A little bit more warmth into the knuckles. But anyway, so my main camera just shut off. So um, hopefully it didn't, I didn't lose too much footage. But the last thing that I was talking about uh, was the struggle. Um, it's a positive struggle. Um, it's a struggle that happens if, you know, you, you enjoy your craft. Uh, you're trying to master something, not, not, not every day. Um, things aren't going to work out perfectly every day. Um, and sometimes you're just really trying to push yourself, trying to push yourself. And um, it's a positive struggle. It's a, it's a positive type of stress that you put on yourself uh, to push yourself forward. In, in your craft and really pursue the mastery um, in whatever field that you're in. And as I'm talking about this, I realize I forgot her ring. So uh, let's go ahead and paint her ring in there. It's kind of important. So let's go ahead and get, uh, I don't know, a little bit of ivory black. Let's go ahead and dilute the paint a little bit with the Liquin Original. I think that's what it's called. Yep. Liquid original. So ivory black, sap green, just because I want a cooler color that isn't that dark. All right. And for the lights, I'm going to get a different brush. 
add a little bit of Liquin Original, Titanium White, and yeah, just that. I don't want to put too much emphasis on the details, not even at this stage. So let's go ahead and put that ring in there. I remember in the transfer drawing, I put it in uh, wrong a couple of times. That's all right. Little dark shape there. A little bit lighter over here. So we're gonna have a dark shape. So here's how we're gonna approach jewelry. Let's approach jewelry as just a few brush strokes. Just like we did in Ella Prima, we're gonna do in this. A little bit of light right there. A little bit of light right here. And that's about it. I don't wanna to put too much for that. So after adding a few more values into the hand, I think that's about all I'm going to want to do for the first color pass onto the hand. And remember the first color pass is about uh, trying to further develop the drawing and the structure while introducing a very basic color. Now once this layer dries, if there are a few more drawing mistakes, and I'm sure there will be, uh, those drawing mistakes can be corrected, but at the same time, we will be able to make these colors uh, even closer to what we're observing. But let's also remember that it's not about copying a photograph, it's about interpreting visual information and creating a painting. So with that being said, I hope that this video helps you out. Please let me know what you think about this, um, this new camera setup. Um, is it a little more interesting for you to watch than just watching my hand and listening to my voice behind the camera? And uh, another thing, I'm going to show you what the hand looks like um, at a front view because my camera is actually on the side. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, sorry for the weird angle, uh, but that is what the hand looks like with the camera straight onto the, the hand. Now, I, I can't really have the camera always in, in this angle just because how am I going to paint over it? I actually used to do that with my smaller camcorder, but it was just too much of a task to paint uh, right, literally right behind a camera. So anyway, I hope that this video helps you out. I wish you the best in all of your artwork, and I'll see you again in another 24 hours.